The first thing I'd say to you is, enjoy your work, because you're going to be a long time at it. Uh, if you don't enjoy it, I really would give you some strong advice, move on and do something else. Now, I know you can say, well, I've got a mortgage, or I've got children, or I've got responsibilities. Well, it's absolutely true, but even that, if you're not happy and you're not happy for a long time, then you should really think about moving on. My own son was a banker in Australia until two years ago. He rang me up one night and he said, Dad, I'm not very happy. I'm thinking about, you know, moving on. I said, well, don't do anything, Tom, just before we discussed it. He said, actually, I've resigned. So, you know. <laughs> OK, fine. And he's now running a couple of gyms, not making any money, but he's happy. So he's doing, you know, what is the right thing. Got to do that. It's the most important thing. Be flexible. In life, you know, you can have as many plans as you like. Somebody else will try and thwart your plans, either deliberately or through serendipity or through the law of unintended consequences or, 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 or. So be flexible. Stay flexible. You've got to take risks in your own personal careers and in your business careers. If you don't take some risk, you're not going to get any potential reward. Now, the degree of risk, many companies now in governance terms spend days discussing risk and they write amounts, huge amounts of stuff in the risk report in corporate governance papers. But I'm just talking about the fact that you know, nothing comes for nothing. You've got to think about that. Guts versus brains. You know, it's incredibly important to have a brain. But I think it's also amazing today how we all move through life and we forget to use that. If it looks like a duck and it cracks like a duck and it walks like a duck, it's a duck. Right? You don't need to catch the duck, send it off for DNA testing, prove it was a duck to find when you get the <laughs> test back, the duck's flown away. It's a duck. Right? Use your common sense. And the trouble with common sense, as my good friend Sir Philip Green says, the trouble with common sense is, son, it ain't very common. Right? <laughs> How many times do you get somebody coming into your office or talking to you about a plan? It's all full of, it's all full of acronyms and it's all full of great big PowerPoint presentations. And you stop back and think about this. There's a lot of gobbledygook in here. Actually, what's he trying to tell me? So one of the things I often do to people is to say, look, tell me in one sentence, put the paper away, shut it down, close your iPad, tell me in a sentence what you're trying to do. Keep it simple, not only in that sense, but in the business you're in. And the bigger the business gets, the more people like to complicate it. It's very simple. I think it's Tuka Suleiman, who's the new Dragon's Den man, who's actually a friend of mine, said, you know, you can only affect three things in business. You can only affect the sales line, the margin line, the cost line. <laughs> Believe in what you do and stick to your guns. So if you have this plan, Stick to your plan because it takes a long time to get some traction to get the plan moving. But don't be stubborn, don't be stupid, use your common sense. If you've got an early indication that after some time this plan ain't working, then be big enough to say the plan ain't working. You don't have to get it right first time. You can have some fallibility. You can be wrong as a, ch as a chief executive or as a leader. It's like, okay, okay, I've got it slightly wrong. Can we move left a bit and can we move right a bit? They will respect you more for it. Don't be afraid of changing your mind. You cannot ignore today the whole sustainability agenda, right? You can continue to make a profit in your business for years by ignoring it, but eventually you'll get caught out, right? If you are a sustainable business, you will end up being a more profitable business and you will earn the respect of your consumers, whoever you are. And if you don't do it, you'll find you have to do it eventually because everybody else is doing it. It is an important thing to get right. Whether we're talking about climate change, whether we're talking about living wage, whether we're talking about traceability of raw materials, you've got to get involved in that. And then the last couple of things, really. Remember that leadership is very lonely. When I was taken out of sort of general management and put into inverted commas at M&S my first time around senior management, the personnel director called me along and said, Stuart, sit down. Actually, he said, Mr. Rose, sit down. And I said, yes, sir, because that's what we used to say in those days. And he said, I just want you to know your life's going to change. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, now that you're bossing 10 or 13 people who used to be your, your, your peer group, uh, you know, they won't be coming to the pub with you quite so often. You're, you'll be deciding what's going to happen to them in terms of their career paths and their, whether they do well or not do so well. And therefore, the relationship will change. And as you go up the business, it changes even more. And then, of course, the whole other issues come in because people tell you what you want to hear and sycophancy comes in. Nobody tells the emperor he hasn't got any clothes. As you get up an organisation, build a group around you of people that you love and trust who are probably mostly outside the business, who are people who will tell you that the emperor's got no crows, people who will tell you, Stuart, you're completely bonkers, this is the maddest idea I've ever heard. Take time out. I only looked at my own diary at the weekend. You know, we've all gone back to school after the summer holidays and suddenly, you know, our diary's full of lists and it's full of this and we're going from one meeting to another, meeting to another. Sometimes your brain seizes up, or mine does, if you haven't got time to think. And I had a boss who's just sadly died, John Hoskins, Sir John Hoskins, who was the man who set up Maggie Thatcher's think tank in the 80s. And he used to say to me when he was my chairman back in the, in the 80s, say, sure, take, uh, have KF time in your diary, keep free time. 
where you just blank something out and you keep it free. Go on, talk to the ducks in Hyde Park or wherever you live. Go on, have a think about life, because quite often if I've faced a problem myself and I now recognize the symptoms, my brain almost seizes up. It's almost a bit like examitis for some of us who've ever had, suffered from that, I have, where you can't think straight. Whereas if you relax your brain a bit, sometimes the answer comes from left or right, right field. It's important to have that time out. The last thing to say is the importance of money. I meet too many people today who say to you when you say, well, what do you want to do? I want to be a chief executive. We're going to have a long debate about it. Might have some questions. Do you really want to be a chief executive? Actually, it's not all it's cracked up to be. And, you know, so there are some very nasty bits about being a chief executive you might not like at all. Have you thought it through? And there's lots of fantastic jobs that you can do in a business which all give you a great work-life balance, all give you a huge amount of satisfaction, and you, uh, all allow you to sort of be part of a big and successful team if we get it right. So do you really want to be a chief executive? And by the way, there's one other problem. That there's only one chief executive in every business, so it's quite a difficult place to get to. But it's not the be-all and end-all. The other thing is, the, as I say, is, is the importance of money in terms of... Too many people say to me, I want to make a lot of money. Fine. But it shouldn't be the prime driver, in my view, about what you do. What should make you do is do what you're doing and have that fun thing I started with today. Have fun. Do the job that you've got to the best of your ability. Really, really, really make your area sing. If you're any good, you will get noticed, I promise you, or you will notice those people who work for you. You all know those people who work for you, who put the efforts in, who get the results. You all know the people who don't. What then happens is the money follows you. And that's how it works. But if you go in all the time, I want to be promoted, I want to move the next level up, it's, it actually can become quite, quite um, draining on the individual, and it can be very draining for the manager of that individual.